Many inventors have been called crazy throughout history, especially for those who don't follow the status quo. So it was no surprise that heads were shaking when Wes Melcher, a design engineer from Arizona, showcased his leaning snowmobiles at the Snowmobile USA show in Michigan. Melcher said that he could forever change the way snowmobiles handle power. On the trail, the Wessel leaning system relies on a high-tech electronic and hydraulic system that takes feedback from a control box located on top of the steering post. The system causes the sled to lean and dive into corners by up to a 35-degree angle. What's more, the Wessel system uses five-foot-long carbon fiber skis that have titanium edges running down both sides. I'll be the first to say, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Enter a kick-ass track chair named the Rip Chair. The Rip Chair 3.0 is a high-powered treaded wheelchair that provides off-road access to anyone. Developed by How & How Technologies, Rip Chair is the ultimate off-road chair. Each one is entirely customizable from hand controls to extras such as cup holders, gun racks, fishing rod holders, and storage compartments. The Rip Chair has a 27 horsepower engine and features a ramp design that allows users to attach most powered or manual wheelchair designs. For chairs that don't fit, the Rip Chair can be modified to accommodate any special needs or custom requests. This customization level makes for a six to eight week build time, as each one is 100% handcrafted. A click through the videos on the company's website shows that when it comes to adaptive off-road ability, the Rip Chair is in a league all its own. Yvonne Martel's multi-purpose all-terrain electric locomotive looks like a mix between a snowmobile, a dog sled, and a miniature World War I tank. This electric creation is nothing if not versatile, known as the MTT-136. This French-Canadian all-terrain pulling device is one of those enigmatic all-purpose machines whose appeal extends well beyond a particular demographic. Depending on the battery system selected, Martel's electric sled is reported to deliver a range between 45 and 137 miles. The MTT-136, short for My Track Technology, weighs in at around 280 pounds and can reach speeds of up to 24 miles per hour on open ground. According to the designer, the electrified sled has a recharge time between 15 minutes and 8 hours, depending on the battery. The MTT-136 has a low center of gravity and copious amounts of immediately accessible electric torque. And the Caterpillar tread system gives the sled Swiss Army knife-like capabilities, but in a more substantial casing. Capable of pulling several different hauling and passenger units, the sled steering and power is managed by the rider through a modified handlebar system. Commissioned by Expedition founders Andrew Moon and Andrew Regan, the Concept Ice Vehicle, or CIV, was a biofueled propeller-powered vehicle. Andrew Moon bid to cross the Antarctic in 2009, but the expedition was rescheduled until November of 2010. The ice vehicle was re-engineered and renamed the Winston Wong Bio-Inspired Ice Vehicle. Professor Winston Wong sponsored the Moon Regan Transantarctic Expedition, and the journey had several key objectives. First, to show that the right motorized vehicles can operate successfully and efficiently in the Antarctic. Second, to successfully complete a transantarctic crossing. And lastly, to help researchers at Imperial College London gather useful data on vehicle emissions. The expedition's lead vehicle ran entirely on E85 ethanol fuel. The land-based trip provided scientists with a rare opportunity to take continuous measurements using sensitive equipment. As the bio-inspired vehicle progressed deep into Antarctica, 
the expedition's successful completion confirmed that biofuels can perform well under the most extreme temperature conditions, expanding its potential for renewable energy. Snowcoach designed the 685 to give kids and small adults a comfortable vantage point to enjoy a snow ride. The Equinox 685 is an enclosed trailer that rides on shock-absorbed skis and can be towed by a snowmobile or ATV. The craft's streamlined hull, constructed of molded polyethylene, has eight windows, four in the front, two on the side, and two up top. Two side doors swing open for easy entry and exit. Its smooth ride and plentiful windows allow those within to snap pictures of winter's beauty while comfortably nestled and safely restrained inside on two cushioned belted seats. Brake and running lights and reflectors maintain the craft's high visibility on tree-lined trails and open snowfields. Madeline Island is one of the Apostle Islands in Lake Superior. There's regular ferry service from Bayfield, Wisconsin. Still, when the lake freezes, residents use an enclosed ice boat to travel to and from the island. They call it an ice angel or wind sled. Toward the beginning and end of winter, ice is either forming or thinning on Lake Superior's stretch between the island and Bayfield, which causes conditions too hazardous for boats or driving. The fan-powered 22-passenger vehicle glides across the ice, but won't sink or capsize in water, and makes the trip in about four minutes. Although there's an ice road that Madeline Island's residents can drive cars over, many still use the Ice Angel as they find it safer. Geo Rescue is a cross between a Hummer and an ambulance. Built by Geo Motors, a Romanian company, the rescue can be customized depending on your needs for firefighting, medical support, or transportation across any terrain. The 11 passenger utility truck with remarkable off road capabilities is powered by either a 500 horsepower gas engine or a 300 horsepower diesel motor. This 4x4 can take you across rivers, through snow, climb steep embankments, and even navigate deep water with inflatable tire attachments. It can be outfitted as an ambulance or carry water and serve as a fire truck when set up to fight fires. The 3.2-ton rescue can transport nearly 200 gallons of water along with all the pumps and hoses that a firefighter would need to combat a forest fire. I'd feel safe knowing that an ambulance is the kind of thing coming to save me in an emergency. Joseph Armand Bombardier started building his first creation when he was a teenager in 1922. It was an open concept sled with a Ford Model T engine pushing a propeller in the back. Legend has it that his father was concerned with his safety and ordered its destruction. Bombardier did not quit his dream of building passenger snowmobiles, though. In 1937, he started producing the B7 fully enclosed snowmobile, which eventually transformed into the commercially successful B12. Later, Bombardier finally went on to be a household name for his inventions. You might have heard them by their more modern name, the ski -Doo. To build his high-riding snowplow, Colorado welder Rex Bailey mounted tires from an agricultural sprayer onto an old Dodge 3500 Cummins diesel pickup truck. He used a commercial plasma cutter to create spokes, axle mounts, and the truck's rear end. The Yeti's high tractor tires are mounted on Unimog portal axles and drive through snow up to three feet deep. I think it's safe to say there's not much getting in the way of this snowplow. Bailey estimated its total build time at 2,600 hours. 
I'm starting to think this guy really hated shoveling snow off his sidewalk. Whether they're on wheels or snow treads, the French gearheads at Lazarus have a thing for infusing their creations with a bit of Italian flair. This extreme snowmobile has 250 horsepower and is an evolution of the Wizuma R1. It is a snowmobile quadricycle hybrid that features a snow kit that fits onto the original wheel's place. Once you ride this, you will be ready to face the cold and snow in areas where the landscape is not the only thing to take your breath away. <laughs>